G'day folks. Well, the equipment autopsy for today will be this big Fujitsu inverter. This one here, I think it's 15, 16 kilowatts capacity. Unbelievably heavy for a single stack unit. Normally they go the two twin side draft fan models for that size. But this one's all inverter drive. <coughs> it's quite impressively large. A lot of sealant on the main board there. Obviously they've wised up to the fact that they get moisture in them. Uh, well, there's components there that aren't covered in it. Big capacitor. Um, looks like the top of an accumulator in there. That's probably why it's so heavy. So we've got a big DC scroll compressor in it as well. The main digital board. There's the IGBT for the compressor. Or is that? No. That's probably an inverter power module or something. IPM module. That's the IGBT there, I think. But either way, it's serious stuff. I'll take this front off. I think it's still held on somewhere. Well, now we're getting down to it. The monster fan motor. Three layered coil. Yeah, three layers. That's why, one of the reasons why it's so heavy. The other is this, there's a big accumulator for the suction line. And I'm pretty sure that's a DC scroll compressor. Yeah, there's a tube going out by the looks of it. Oh no. It's that one. I'll have to pull this shit off and try and uncover it. But they sure pack it in tight. Got three solenoid valves. They're going between liquid line Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a liquid line, I think. High pressure out. For some reason they've got solenoids to dump from high pressure to low pressure. And there's three of them. Why they do that, I don't know. It's probably one of the little tricks in R410A systems. It's got an arrow on it that's flowing liquid line out that way. Obviously meaning in heat pump it returns liquid that way. In cooling liquid goes out through there. Uh, suction lines coming up here to the reversing valve. Yeah. No. That's the suction line. That's the big valve there. So it's coming up to that side of the reversing valve. That side there is going down to the condensing coil. That's the high temperature in from the compressor, which is the one that these solenoid valves are tapped into, and it's that one there. So that's the outlet from the compressor. Is the top of the compressor is there, so the head's there, um, and that's yeah, that suction line for the compressor because it's got the accumulator on it. So any liquid accumulates in here. That's got a sensor on it. Accumulates inside the accumulator, and then goes down there, which is the suction in into the compressor. Okay. As I skin this thing and peel bits off it, we'll get a bit better understanding of how it all works. Now it's got no gas in it, service valve core's missing. So they've obviously recovered it. It probably had about 5 kilos of R410A in it, so if the compressor ain't burnt out, I wouldn't be wasting it. But there's a sensor there, there's a sensor there, there's a sensor on there, there's a sensor up there, there's a sensor in the middle of the coil, there's sensors in the fan. This thing's probably got about a dozen sensors in the outdoor unit alone. It'd be a bugger to troubleshoot can't blame it for just chucking it out if the, if the inverter started playing up. That and Fujitsu don't supply second-hand part or new parts for uh, out-of-date units like this one. So you snook it either way. Alright, before I get too carried away, I might buy this thing up and see what it does. There's tons of dip switches here. Hopefully there's a force run button somewhere. Another dip switch there. Might be able to get some activity out of it. Got a nice big bridge rectifier feeding into this control module. Um, choke coil, DC choke or whatever that is. It's funny how it's set up. That's a IPM drive module. And that's a, uh, what does that say? ACTPM brick. I'm guessing it's all part of the uh, well, similar family to an IGBT. Insulated gate, bipolar transistor. Boards aren't held in very well. Yeah. Yeah, compressor is what I thought 
thought it was too. It's a uh, time made in Thailand. Siam Compressor Industries. Probably a piece of crap, but I haven't tested it. I don't know if it's, don't know if it's short or not. No, that's not a uh, sensor either. That's a pressure switch. Yeah, that's a pressure switch. That's a sensor. That's just lagged onto the pipe. So that's alright. This thing's still got a million sensors in them. Same with the indoor units, they'll have half a dozen sensors in them. Okay, well these units use a uh, one wire ethereal communication system to tell it whether to run in heat or cool or defrost or whatever. So it's very tricky to get them to run. I've never been able to get them to run properly without the indoor unit. But I might try a few things and bypass a few things and just get it to start. Starting with that big relay down there, bypass that. That's communication from the digital board. Um, yeah, let's just turn it on and see how it goes without the serial communication. Hang on, main breaker on. No activity. Relay click. EEV cycled. Probably just got a three minute delay. I'll let it sit for a couple of minutes. Alright, no start after two minutes, which is sort of what I expected. Let's play with some buttons. Nothing from that dip switch. There's a whole heap of them in here. Don't know what they do. Hmm. Might just start bypassing things. This power supply doesn't look important. Let's just go straight past it and put straight 240AC into it. Now I think this board here is for power management. It's got a CT on it current transformer and also for um, RF filtering that sort of thing noise suppression um, not useful around here I don't need them I know someone's going to pipe up and say you can't do that it's an FCC violation it makes RF noise well so does putting a MOT against one, across one of these motors and well that's not going to stop me from putting a MOT across that motor one day that's going to be fun oh and that came out of the uni air that was a sad noisy fan motor that's going to get a mod across it as well. Or better yet, just 240 volts. Connect up common and neutral to um, ground and then just put plain 240 into the three speed windings at once. Set them all on fire. But for now, I've got 240 going straight to the rectifier and straight to the um, board's own internal power supply. At least I think that's supposed to be 240 in. I'll soon find out if it goes bang. Alright, let's see if we can make some sparks. Nothing. Hmm. Oh, AEV is doing its thing again. It's somewhat there. These always have a delay on startup, so I might have to toggle a relay or something to get it to wake up. I think that's the fan cap there. I should at least power the fan up before I destroy it. Hmm. I need the signal from that board over there that I pulled out. That's probably why it's not starting now. That's the only signal that goes to it. Well, I've officially pulled the plug on this one. It's dead. Um, I worked out this is the communications. We've got positive 5 volts as well as one for each mode, there'll be a, compre there's a compressor start. I found by introducing 5 volts it'll close this relay here, which I've bypassed anyway, but that'll close the compressor start relay. Um, there's one for heating and one for cooling, or one, one to energize the reversing valve when it wants heat, and then one to uh, maybe do a defrost or something, stop the fan. I don't know. These things are a piece of crap. I'm just going to rip it apart and keep all this insulation tubing and shit. Got a treasure trove of little bits in it. Nice big cap. Always discharge these when you play with them. I've discharged this one. 
Um, I found this meter also tells you when it's charged too. There's nothing on that now. But don't just rely on a non-contact meter to tell you it's charged short it's worth. Um, inverter power brick. Could be fried. I'm getting DC down at the compressor but it's just not rotating and it's not making any noises. It's not doing anything. Despite the fact that there's about 30 volts DC across it. But either way, it'll all come apart. I will plug the fan in though. And see how well that runs. Well, at least the fan still works. I think that's on high. Yeah, red and white. Blue's low. A decent amount of power. Oh, time to keep gutting it. Let's get stuck into this side. I'll rip all the covers off and then work out what part's what. Oh, that's just for the buddy compressor. And that's all valves and sensors. Alright, now that we're starting to skin it a bit, <coughs> let's have a look at some of these sensors. Well, these aren't sensors actually, these are solenoid coils. One for a reversing valve, just the clear grey one. And two blue ones for these solenoid valves which go between high pressure and low pressure. They're obviously for pressure mo monitoring or pre maintaining pressures at certain levels by dumping. Um, sensor wise, well, we've got two pressure switches. That's a accumulator pressure switch, so suction side, and that's a high pressure side discharge pressure switch. And they go over there. Now there's accumulator suction line out temperature sensor in there. Let's pull that out. There's that one there. That's an outdoor air temperature thermistor. Tiny little thing. This one here is at the top of the coil. So that would be... Oh, it depends whether it's running in heating or cooling mode. It just monitors the temperatures. Uh, whether the coil is icing up or not. Could be a defrost sensor. Normally these start frosting up at the bottom and climb. So that's probably a defrost sensor. Um, this one here is on the capillary tube going out, so that's probably liquid temperature monitoring. It'll monitor if the uh, liquid flow is too hot, too cold, change fan speed, change compressor speed. Because remember this is a variable speed drive. That's compressor absolute discharge temperature monitoring. It's lagged on with that stuff and it monitors the temperature coming straight out of the compressor. So there you have it. It's a lot of sensors for a little air conditioner. Oh, and that's the electronic expansion valve down there. Should just be able to pop that head off. It's just a stepping motor. And it winds the needle down inside the socket, inside that canister there, just like a um, fuel needle on a carburetor. I've done a cutaway video on these before, so look up uh, electronic expansion valve exposed and you'll find my video on how they work. Okay, with well this assembly out, you can see pretty easy that one of these solenoids is for dumping liquid from the output. This is the liquid line out and it has a tube coming off it. Oh, there's the liquid feed in from the condensing coil on the back through the EEV and past the EEV it goes up to this solenoid here which can choose to dump through into the suction line. Uh, the second solenoid goes from the high temperature discharge of the compressor which is this one here goes into the top of the reversing valve as normal but it also has a tap off it going into the solenoid valve and out into the suction line so I don't quite know why they do that but I'm sure somebody knows I'll cut them off and keep them as an intact unit could be handy little brass solenoid valves pressure switches likewise the rest of it can just go in the copper bin so you've got to cut them out because they're cut classed as coast brass or dirty brass. They have a steel sled inside it and the um, solenoid coil mount even though it's stainless it's still not brass so it's classed as coast. Compressors aren't classed as electric motor scrap anymore even if I cut them in half. So 
so I just leave them in one piece. Drain the oil though. That can all get chopped out, chop the valves out, take the compressor off, clean the coils, and when I say clean I mean cut the steel ends off them. Uh, Irony Hopper Alley radiators or coils uh, don't go for anywhere near as much as clean ones. These ones have all been cleaned, cut the steel end plates off. That's an aluminium end plate that's classed as clean. Again, steel ends cut off, clean copper alley. Yeah, having oil and um, solder joints and a little minimal amount of plastic tape and capping and stuff like that classes this as refinery copper. It's only 450 a kilo. Whereas if it's clean and doesn't have oil and paint and weld all over it, it's classed as, as clean copper, which is 550 a kilo. So it's all to do with grading. It goes in the same bin as burnt copper classed as refinery.